Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel for Pacific Coast Auto. My name is Derek Weldon and today we're looking at a 1996 Toyota Supra. Okay, so the Supra is well known for being one of the sexiest cars that is has ever been made, as well as having one of the best combinations of engine and transmission ever. And so this one here is half of that package. You have the sexy, sexy, sexy car, but then you have automatic version of the car uh, with no turbo. And that's not to say it's a bad car, the sexiness of the car, the automatic transmission, some people will prefer that. And then at 220, 230 ish horsepower, somewhere in there, uh, you're looking at a pretty cool engine nonetheless. And so I think it's a pretty good package. And then when you look at prices of Supras and you look at the fact that you can get this automatic uh, turbo, non turbo, pardon me, automatic non turbo version of the car for probably about 15% of the price of the same condition turbo six speed then it kind of starts to add up for the right buyer. Okay, so this one has 120,000 kilometers on it, which seems reasonable. Mechanically, the car seems re uh, very sound. The body on it is in quite good condition. Looking at the engine, no troubles with it whatsoever. Oil looks a tiny bit low, but it is still kind of uh, just below the halfway mark between the low and the high, and so no problem for shipping. Coolant looks to be fine. It's red coolant, it's splashed a little bit over there. Timing belt was changed in 2008 at 85, 536 kilometers. And so twin cam, 2JZGE engine. Same engine as you get in the Toyota Soarer and the, I'm sorry, one second please. The SC300 in Canada and the States and the IS300. And I think the GS300 also got it. Yeah. Closing the hood here. And Something that surprised me, this car comes with a plastic hood. That's weird. Usually it's aluminum or steel, but it's definitely too light to be steel, and then it sounds funny. So, did not know that these came with plastic hoods. Uh, something very interesting there for me. So this one has the original wheels. Basically the car is in original condition, other than a few modifications to the inside. So let's take a look at the auction sheet. This one was bought from auction in Japan, and we're going to be sending this one to Canada. Okay, 1996 Supra SZ. SZ means non-turbo, automatic transmission, 3000 cc. So kind of the same engine, but the internals of the engine are different. You can't just take this engine and put a turbo on it and have the same kind of engine. They are different enough that you can't do that, in case you were wondering. Auction grade R, interior B, exterior B, 120, 916 kilometers. Purchase from user. What does this say? Leather steering wheel. Steering wheel is in great condition this one. In fact, the whole car seems to be pretty good. Uh, it does need a wax and a polish and then uh, uh, that's about it, I would say. Toll collection box, Carzeria Navi. Comes with a reverse camera. Uh, it doesn't come with a remote for the Navi, but who needs a remote for a Navi? That's such a strange idea to me. Okay, brain unit and the spare key are going to be sent to you. So that's like the uh, hard drive for the Navi. Interior is dirty and scratched. Seats wear. Rear floor and end panel dented. Now that's from the accident. R grade means it's been in an accident. Looks like very slight accident damage to me. And then the left rear inner panel is also dented. And so hit in the back, replace this back fender. And the back fender is this one here. The replacement seems like it was okay. There is one area of concern and I'll show you in just a sec. So everything appears to line up relatively well. That's not really the issue. But up here you have some kind of squigglies in the paint. Have a close look. And I did get another video of that. It is an area of concern and so keep that in mind. Condition of the body wise here. Oh, um, on the side step underside is scratched. That happens quite often in uh, sports cars in Japan because vehicles are low and then they just go over a hill and then yeah. Okay, so uh, A2 scratches on the front bumper. The rest of the body is pretty good except for U2 on the hood. And so take a look at the hood. There are some dents right there at the front. It's a little bit difficult to see dents like this on video. So I'll show you a couple of angles here. Now, funny enough, this is the first time that we've ever sold an automatic Supra and first time we've sold a non-turbo Supra. We used to sell the turbo ones quite frequently, but now the price has gone up. They used to be around uh, 1 million to 1.5 million. And then these days, you see them go for about 
2 million to 4 million. So kind of funny how the prices are going up. <coughs> the Supra hasn't reached the same price as they cost when they were brand new cars yet. It's pretty rare for a car to do that, to end up selling you know, 30 years afterwards for the same price as it did when it was a brand new car. But the, that has happened with um, some Skylines, has happened with the 8.6 for sure, because that was always a cheap car when it was brand new. So yeah, the car looks good in black. I quite like it with the original wheels on it, to be honest. I won't lie, aftermarket wheels look way better on it, but seeing the original wheels is kind of cool. Cars with original wheels often, uh, you know, it gives you a little bit more confidence when you're buying. Higher chance that uh, the car wasn't abused. That being said, the back tires are 2014 and they're worn down completely. And so someone before selling the car was having some fun with those tires. And it's the same thing on both sides. The front tires are 2009, kind of weird. Okay, so uh, not really much to say about that. There are some scratches on the hood. It looks like it needs to be polished. Like I said, uh, all the scratches can come out and the paint condition looks to be good enough that it's not going to be a concern with running out of paint while you're polishing. Headlights need to be polished as well. You can see that they're cloudy. I'm gonna turn on the headlight there so that you can see the awesomeness that is super headlights. These ones are the plastic lenses. They do come in plastic and glass lens. The American ones are all glass. But so these ones are plastic and so there we have fog lights in yellow and standard driving lights uh, or the headlights low beams there and then high beams let's see what that looks like this is a science experiment high beams go and while we're at it let's check the folding mirrors that works Okay, well, I guess it's not that interesting on video, but in real life you can actually see that. The, the video uh, is not capable of understanding the coolness of the headlights in real life. Okay, so put that door open, put those mirrors back in. Door cards are in good shape, nice huge speaker on there, it's a six and a quarter by the looks of it. Power windows work. Leather steering wheel's in great shape. This one here is a late model steering wheel. And in fact, the, the gauge section here is the late model one too. And so the early model is a very ugly steering wheel. This one is much sexier, much slimmer and more sporty. The early one was in the early days of airbags where the steering wheel has to be a bulbous lump sticking out in between your hands while you're steering the car. So power steering works well. It's a tilt steering wheel, nose telescoping. Super pure sport floor mat's a little bit worn down here not a little bit it's cracked and missing a piece the AC works and it's super strong driver centric dashboard and I've said this before it kind of looks like they had a list of all of the things that they wanted on the dashboard and they mixed them in a bag and they just threw them on there and uh, they just stuck wherever they stuck it kind of looks like there's no rhyme or reason to it and that's annoying because at nighttime, you, as far as I can tell, you can't turn it off. There's a dial here for something. But at nighttime, that's going to blind you and then you will crash and die. It's amazing that that hasn't happened yet uh, to this car. Okay. The shifting is really nice. It feels good to shift. Um, it does make a boom sound when you shift into reverse and into drive but that's not a mechanical problem that's a problem with the mount of the transmission in most cases this one is a dual airbag and remarkably little amount of deformation in the dashboard this is a popular supra thing for it to deform around this line here and up here and against the windshield and along here you can see a little bit of it right here gauges look kind of cool there kind of 90s and uh, here's a uh, Toyota being an idiot um, for the early models this here was over here and so the mileage would always stay on here when people replaced these with the later ones because notice 180 kilometers an hour even for a, uh, a non-turbo automatic that's pretty low but in Japan that's what they all the cars have and so people would replace that so that they would know how fast that they're going on, for example, a racetrack, or if they thought that they were cool and they wanted to say, Haha, my car, it goes up to 320 on the gauges. And uh, 
And so a lot of people change these and then it resets the mileage, but on the early ones, it wouldn't. And so you wouldn't have a problem with unknown mileage. I don't know why they did that. I thought Toyota was smart, but I guess not. Now the back seat here, they're just pretend back seats. Look at that. That's where I would sit while I'm driving it. And then this one flips down, which is good because the trunk is really small in these cars. Okay, speaking of which, let's trunk it up. Supra, that's cool. Still to this day, those tail lights and the headlights, really cool looking. And the hoop spoiler. It's like, I'm gonna take my Supra to the store. Whee! Bad joke. In Japanese, it's called uh, oji gag, which basically means grandpa's joke. Okay, so this one here, the tonneau cover is supposed to have st strings that attach up to here. This one doesn't have it, so it just kind of lays here and it doesn't retract or anything, so. There's that. I don't know if I would ever use something like that. And then look at that really shallow trunk, considering how big big the butt of this car is. And this car is maybe the first car that convinced everybody that big butts are good looking. <laughs> it wasn't until Sir Mix-a-Lot told everyone else that the big butts were good. I don't know which one came first. Maybe they came at the same time. Perhaps it was supposed to be like a, uh, a marketing thing between Toyota and Sir Mix-a-Lot. Anyways, Here's the end of the video here. Hope you enjoyed this one. We don't get Supers in very often, but hopefully that'll change. They will be legal next year in the USA. And so take a look for that <coughs> in this upcoming year, actually a few months from now. And so if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments section. Otherwise you can check out our website if you want to import a vehicle for yourself into your country. We can send to pretty much every country as long as you are legally allowed to import. Thank you everyone for watching and have a nice day.